October 5th, 9 p.m., memo from Frank Lucas, license appraiser to John Benjamin, attorney. Subject, inventory, the state of Hiram Drake, deceased. Okay, John, you wanted this appraisal completed by Friday. <laughs> so I came back tonight, but if you expect me to be working evenings, you better have the power turned back on. This place gives me the shivers. Quite a character you are, Mr. Drake. Just the type who would go for concealed panels and hidden staircases. Now, I've completed the inventory of the first and second floors, and now I'm ready to tackle that secret collection you said he spent so much money on.
I'm in the cellar now. Fantastic. This place is really like a, a tomb and a pyramid. I couldn't possibly estimate the value of all this stuff. It would take a, an expert in Egyptology to do that. Well, you know that mummy case you said arrived just before he died? You never looked inside, did you? Well, there's something in there. I want to get a full description on tape right away for the insurance company. There's a mummy with a gold amulet around its neck with the face of a cat and emeralds for eyes. You wouldn't believe it unless you saw it with your own eyes. Something I can do for you. You have some unusual jewelry here. <laughs> it's all for sale. Ever buy any? That depends. Candlesticks, old pewter, silverware, jewelry? How did you happen to come here? I heard you were interested in stuff like that. You were misinformed. It's late. We're getting ready to close. Uh, give me a minute. There's something I'd like to show you. Where did this come from? It's a family heirloom. My grandmother died. Sorry about that. Look at the workmanship. A valuable antique. Solid gold. Those jeweled eyes. Emeralds. Well? Get out. You can have it for a good price. I wouldn't touch it with a ten-foot pole. Wait a minute. Just exactly one minute. If you're not out of here by then, you heard me. Out! One minute. something to sell. You can relax. Our working day is over. You're right. And I'm going home. Well, what's the rush? Aren't we going out for a bite to eat? I'm tired. 
I presume you have a date tonight. No, and I don't have any bread either. In case you forgot, it's payday. Oh, well, of course. There you are. Thank you. Hey, where did this come from? Do you like it? Here. Yeah. I've been looking for something to carry my things around with me when I go sketching. Well, it's yours. A present for me. Hey, super. Thanks, Esther. Enjoy. Oh, Sherry. Want a ride home? I'd rather walk. You really shouldn't be walking alone this time of night. Don't worry. Three blocks won't kill me. Knocking over garbage cans. Hey, you hungry? Oh, I get the message. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, the dough. Okay, kitty. Welcome to Shangri La. and make yourself at home. Hey, peace, baby. Give me a chance to stash my loot. Two more weeks, kitty. And I'll have enough saved to buy some wheels and cut out of here. I'm fed up with Miss Hester. But the way she acts, she thinks she owns me. Hey, kitty. I'll go see if we have some caviar in the refrigerator. Sorry, fresh out of caviar. We'll just have to settle for milk. Tell me you're a champagne freak. Who puts it on your fur? Looks like blood.
That's right. I'm uh, looking for a sales clerk. I'm afraid I find myself shorthanded. Are you interested in Miss uh, Carter, Rena Carter? I'm Hester Black. <laughs> Sounds like a witch, doesn't it? <laughs> Yes. But my customers seem to like it. Most of them are into witchcraft, black magic, Satanism. Well, I'm, I'm afraid I really don't know very much about that sort of thing. Oh, no problem, my dear. Once you learn the stock, it'll be just like working in a delicatessen without having to smell the garlic. <laughs> well? Well, I do need a job. If you really think I can handle it. I'm sure you can. Yes, sir. I'm from the university. I was told to see a uh, Lieutenant Marco here. Try the patio. Upstairs to the living room. Right, thank you. In case you said arrive just before he died. You never looked inside, did you? Well, there's something in there. I want to get a full description on tape right away for the insurance company. There's a mummy. What do you want? Uh, you call the university and you ask them to send somebody over. That's right. Well, here I am. <laughs> My name's Roger Edmonds. Are you a professor? That's right. Well, I wasn't sure whether you guys moonlighted on the job. <laughs> you don't know much about teacher salaries, do you, Lieutenant? I teach a course in archaeology. I asked the school to send over an expert on Egypt. Well, I'm afraid I'm all that was available. I'm not a specialist, but I do have a great interest in Egyptology. Egyptology, huh? Yeah, well, um... You know what happened here last night? I was told the man was killed. But, uh, I don't get the connection. Uh, what do you want from me? I'm gonna play a tape for you. And then I want to show you something downstairs. Well, you fellas could read these inscriptions. Uh, it's not that simple. And besides, most of these have been defaced. It could be that uh, somebody didn't want this mummy identified. We found a chisel right here. The lab is running a check for fingerprints. Mm. I don't think this was done by a chisel. For instance, look. See these parallel scratches? They look more like uh, claw marks to me. Well, since when are you a detective? No, I'm not. But archaeology depends a great deal on detection. And besides, Agatha Christie's my favorite writer. Now, tell me, uh, how did the appraiser die? Ask Agatha Christie. <laughs> well, you did mention the wounds on his throat. Uh, couldn't those have been made by some sort of animal? There's an autopsy going on right now. The mummy and the amulet are missing. You want to try to tell me that, a, that an animal stole them? Oh, no. Yeah. There's pewter and silverware pieces missing from upstairs, too. That was a thief. When he opened the mummy's case, he found the amulet. And then he unwrapped the mummy, searching for more jewelry. When the air hit the mummy, it crumpled. Then shouldn't we see the dust of bone fragments, or... What is it? A symbol. Symbol of Bast. Bast? The great cat-headed goddess of Lower Egypt. Cat goddess? Oh, yes. The cult of Bast flourished for centuries. Then around uh, 400 BC, it was stamped out. Its priests were hunted down and buried alive. Why? Well, mainly because they believed that in return for human sacrifices, the goddess could grant them eternal life. And they were also supposed to uh, have the power to turn into cats. What are you trying to make of all of this? Just uh, giving you the historical facts, Lieutenant. Well, here's something for you to think about. Now, whoever committed the murder was after the amulet. Stealing of the mummy was part of his cover-up. Uh, then, uh, what about the strange marks on the appraiser's face? Any number of weapons could have caused those wounds. This just came in from the coroner's office. Mm. Bad news. They finished the preliminary examination of the corpse. The wound 
holes in the throat were made by teeth and claws. There were cat hairs on the body. Good afternoon. Uh, yes, just a moment, please. Who is it? It's some man who's looking for someone named Sherry. I'll take it. Yes? Miss Black speaking? That's right. No, I couldn't say. Sorry. Who's the Sherry he's looking for? Oh, just a girl who used to work for me before you came. You getting tired, Professor? I never knew this town had so many pawn shops. Oh, relax. This is just the beginning. Why do you think the killer would want to pawn that amulet? Well, why not? He's got to dump it someplace, doesn't he? Suppose he didn't try to sell. Maybe he's a collector himself. No way. If he was a collector, he'd take all the Egyptian stuff he could get his hands on. All he took from upstairs was silver. He could unload that anywhere. Mm. All he took from downstairs was the amulet. That's solid gold. Listen, why don't you quit being the detective, huh? All I want from you is identification when we find the piece. If we find it. One more stop and we'll call it a day. Well, why are we stopping here? You'll see. Face of a cat? the only cat we've got. No, that doesn't even look like it. No, it's an amulet. Now, you sure nobody stopped by in the last couple of days with anything like it? Well, I wouldn't know. I just started working here yesterday. Maybe somebody else saw him. What about your boss? What's all this? Lieutenant. Miss Black. I want you to meet a friend of mine, Roger Edmonds. Hester Black. One of the sharpest fences in the business. <laughs> Not really, Marco. You know that's all over and done with. I'm straight. Straight? <laughs> well, you could sleep on a corkscrew. Look, if you came here to insult me... No, I just want to ask you a few questions. Something about a, an amulet with the face of a cat. I tried to tell them I've never seen it. Well, that's true, Lieutenant, but I did. When? Three nights ago. This man came in here with a story about a family heirloom. The story was phony, but the peace... It was genuine. It was about three inches wide. Solid gold. Emerald eyes. Big stones. Exquisite work. What'd you pay for it? Are you out of your mind? I told him to get out. Can you describe this man? Oh, Middle-aged. Oriental. Chinese, I'd say. Anyone else in the store here? No, just a clerk. But she was in the back room. Her? No, the girl before her. Who? What's her name? Hastings. Sherry Hastings. Mm, that's odd. I got a routine report on a Sherry Hastings yesterday from the coroner's office. The girl who used to work here is dead? Suicide. She did a header off her balcony of her apartment three nights ago. Oh. <laughs> girl. I intended to, but I was so terribly upset. And why did she kill herself? I don't know. She seemed perfectly all right when she left here. There has to be a reason. You know, when you were describing that amulet, I got the feeling as though I could see it. A golden cat, thousands of years old. You know what they say about the ancient Egyptians guarding their dead. Suppose that amulet had some kind of curse on it? Oh, look. It's only a piece of jewelry. And Sherry never even saw it. You sure it's not here? Believe me, the amulet is not here. 
Get some rest now. I'll see you in the morning. Perhaps dinner tomorrow night. Perhaps. Hi. Roger Edmonds. Remember me? The detective. Oh, hardly. Only a poor university instructor. Lieutenant Marco asked me to help him with his case. Did he ask you to follow me, too? Oh, no, 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 no. Coming back here was my own idea. You just seemed so upset, I just wanted to make sure you were all right, that's all. Thank you. You don't have to worry. Oh, worrying's my hobby. Teaching archaeology and Egyptology is just a job. Egyptology? Huh? The lieutenant wants me to help him decipher and identify the stolen amulet, if we ever find it. Do you think you can? You know what? That's a very complicated question. Now, I'll tell you what. Suppose I try answering it while we're having dinner. What do you say? All right, thank you. Great, come on. And by then, you see, the Shashank, or Libyan pharaohs, believed that Bast was the daughter of Ra, the sun god. And to her shrine, they built a great city called Bubastis, the house of Bast. You know, you really do sound like a professor. <laughs> Meaning I don't know when to shut up. Okay, it's your turn. You tell me all about yourself. What do you want to know? Everything. Now you sound like a detective. <laughs> Lieutenant Marco's a good teacher. Well, let's see how good you are. What do you know about me? Well, um, you told me you're from the East. You're new in town. Yeah, what else? You're quick, intelligent, and you're a loner. Now, why do you say that? Well, um, uh, a teacher tends to analyze his students. You're the quiet type. You want to relate to people, but actually are shy, right? And that's very surprising. Because you're warm. You're charming. And you're beautiful. Now, wait a minute. I never told you that. You didn't need to. Oh, what? <laughs> A good meal and a little platter in your room. Oh, Roger, it's such a glorious evening. Did you ever get the feeling you'd kind of like to just dance in the streets? All this on just two my ties. Yeah. <laughs> What's the matter? Just a pet shop. It scares me. Why? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Let's just go. It was, until now. Well, this will only take a moment. Got something I want to show you. After that description you gave me yesterday afternoon, I pulled a few mug shots out of the fire. Mm. Maybe you'll recognize one of them. Yeah. No. Sorry. Sorry. That's your man. Are you sure that's him? Positive. Yeah. Who is he? Well, that's Joe Sung. Part-time handyman, full-time wino. Three counts of breaking and entry. Last month, he was a gardener at the Drake Estate. Then he knew the place, how to get in. Mm -hmm. Why would he kill that appraiser? He'll explain that when we find him. Where do you look? Where do you look for a wino in this town? Yeah, I know the party. Joe is something. You sure it's the same guy? Yeah. Signed the register. See? Joe Sum, room 206. Hi, big boy. Want a drink? Be quiet, Maybell. What was the date of this entry? I guess I goofed. You know how it is, officer. Fella gets busy. When did he check in? Let me see now. Uh, last night, maybe 10.30, 11. Oh, yeah, I saw the guy. Any luggage? Carrying a load, if that's what you mean. Is he up in his room now?
Is he... Is he dead? Miss Carter. It's her day off. Oh, good. I was afraid she might have been upset by the news. News? The man who tried to send you that amulet, he was killed last night. Didn't you see the paper? I don't read newspapers. But you do read tarot cards. Why not? Magic is my business. Rena said you didn't believe in such things. When did she tell you that? The night before last. We had dinner together. I see. Well, maybe I can find her at home this afternoon. Don't let me interrupt your game. It's not a game, Mr. Edwards. As an Egyptologist, you certainly know that the tarot cards represent pages from the ancient Egyptian Book of Thoth, and that for centuries men have used its symbols to look into the mysterious future. I know, just as they use all the other stuff you sell here. Crystal balls, I Ching, palmistry charts. It is all fortune-telling, you know. Suppose I were to tell you that when I spread out the tarot cards last night, it foretold the death of Joe Sung. Then why didn't you warn Lieutenant Marco? Because he would have laughed at me as you do now. I'm not laughing at you. But there is such a thing as coincidence. You can't ignore it. There is such a thing as fate, and you can't escape it. Suppose I were to tell you that I am spreading these ten cards for you, Mr. Edmund. Now, why this sudden interest in me? Because of your sudden interest in matters that shouldn't normally concern you. The amulet, the murders. You are part of the pattern now. What pattern? Well, see for yourself. Here you are in your present position. The fool with the immediate influence over you, the devil. Are you sure you didn't stack this deck? Fate guides my hand, Mr. Edmonds. The third card represents your goal, the world. The fourth card, your distant past. The card below, your recent past. And this one, a reference to your future. The hangman. I'm sorry I don't believe in capital punishment. Symbolism. This card represents me, the uh, questioner. The high priestess. This one, your environment, symbolized by the tower. And your inner emotion, the magician. This is number nine. But you said this was a ten-card spread. The first nine represent you and the conditions surrounding you. The tenth card will show you the final result you may expect from all this. Well, don't stop now. Suppose you deal the card. That is, unless you are afraid. Why should I be afraid? After all, it's my fate. Yes, Mr. Edmonds, it is your fate. You know, somehow I never pictured you in a place like this. I know it, but it's a bargain. The owners are in Europe. They just wanted someone to stay here while they're gone. When I heard the rent, I couldn't resist. Uh, where did you live before? In an apartment. No, I mean before you came to town. What about your family? I'm on my own. 
I'm awfully glad you're here. I was worried about you. Again. Don't you ever get the feeling of being isolated up here? You forget I'm a loner. You shouldn't be. You don't have to be. Hello? Oh, yes, just a moment, please. It's for you. Hello? I tried to get you at school, but they told me you already left. So I stopped by the sorcerer's shop. I've got the pawn ticket. You've got the pawn ticket? We found it in Joe Sung's left shoe. The poor joker gave away the amulet for drinking money. He never realized how much he could really get for it. Well, the Egyptian government claim the Drake collection was smuggled in illegally. They're considering a reward for the return of the amulet. $50,000. No questions asked. If they do, I figure you're entitled to a cut for the identification. Now, how about it, Professor? You willing to take a ride with me? That's the Hollywood pawnbroker. Santa Monica and Western. I've got one stop to make on the way. The county morgue. I'll see you there in a half hour. Thanks. Oh, Lieutenant. Good luck. and claw marks on the throat. The shape of the lacerations indicate they were inflicted by an animal the size of a domestic cat. A cat? If you'll examine the jugular vein. That's enough. I merely wanted to point out that these wounds are the same as those we found on the body of the appraiser. So, uh, you think it might be... it might be the same type of animal? The same animal? The bacterial cultures from the wounds of both victims are identical. Rabies? No indication. Then uh, what you're saying is that these men were killed and attacked by a common domestic cat. I'm not offering an opinion. My job is to give the evidence. It doesn't make any sense. One thing more, Lieutenant. The bodies of both victims were almost completely drained of blood. And after all, you've got to realize that the ancient Egyptians weren't just idiots who worshipped gods with the heads of animals. Those heads were only symbols of supernatural forces, like the signs of the zodiac. And the Egyptian priests claimed they could use such forces. Do you understand what I'm saying? Understand, yes. Believe? No. And just remember this, Lieutenant. While our ancestors were still living in caves, the Egyptians were building the Great Pyramid. They knew medicine, navigation, astronomy. They held the key to so many things. Secrets that we still haven't learned. Like cats that drink human blood. Hmm. I suppose. Now, just suppose, and I know this sounds ridiculous, that blood is necessary to preserve a mortal life. Like vampires, huh? Forget it, Professor. All right, then. What's your theory? I'll tell you all about it just as soon as I get my hands on that amulet. Anybody here?
for Hester. She hasn't come in yet. You checked her apartment? You bet we have. Lieutenant, you don't think she had anything to do with what happened yesterday, do you? Well, why suspect her? Pawn shops are robbed every day. That's right. But in this case, nothing was touched. The only thing missing was the amulet. She, if she wanted that, she could have bought it the night it was stolen. Well, like she said, too risky. What reason would she have for changing her mind? Plenty of reasons. She heard me talk about the reward when I phoned from here yesterday. She got to the shop ahead of me and tried to con the pawnbroker out of the amulet. Only she didn't have a ticket. It was a hassle. She reached for the paper knife off the desk and... Please. No. Do you think she'll try and claim the reward? There won't be any. The State Department recommended the Egyptian government withdraw the reward offer. They felt it would encourage thefts of other relics from all over the world. It was all for nothing, and Hester's gone. I don't think so. There's an AP out. Her apartment's staked out. We've got a car in custody. And even if she tries to leave town, it's going to take money. That's where you come in. I don't understand. Hester keeps cash on hand here at the shop, doesn't she? Yes, yeah, some. Well, she'll probably try to get a hold of it. I want you to keep this place open tonight. Just in case she comes back. What if she does? I'll put this place under 24-hour surveillance. You'll be perfectly safe, I guarantee you. And she agreed? There's nothing to worry about. She'll be all right. You take my word for it. Hester won't harm her. I'm not thinking about Hester. All right, maybe she did kill a pawnbroker, but that still doesn't explain what happened to the others. Well, what do you want me to do? Put out an AP for the mummy of an Egyptian priest and a cat that drinks human blood? I don't care what you do, but Rena must be protected. She is. Now, you take my word for it. I've got one of my men on duty there right now. <laughs> Home?
I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't come by. The police have been here all afternoon questioning me about what happened last night. I know. I got a call to come see Marco myself. Oh. Why don't you come with me? No, I'll be all right. Well, what does the lieutenant want to see you about? I mean, you just said it was important. Well, it's all my fault. If I, if I hadn't gone out to see if Hester was hiding somewhere it's outside... It's not your fault. How could you know? The cat, or whatever it was, must have followed her to the shop. And no cat hypnotizes and kills. That's right. No ordinary cat. <coughs> Take it easy. It's only a harmless alley cat. Roger, let's go away somewhere. Why? It doesn't matter where, just anywhere. All of these murders and now Hester. I'm just so frightened. Come on. Come on. Sewn inside the lining of Hester's cape. Take a closer look. Yeah. Is it genuine? Offhand, I'd say this comes from the period around 450 BC, the time that the temples of Bast were being destroyed. Well, how about the inscription? Does it say anything about the mummy? I have to study these hieroglyphs before I can decipher them. I need my uh, research sources. What does that mean? Well, if you let me take this to the university, I can uh, look at the references there for my translation. I don't think so. But if it's important, we'll uh, know exactly what it says. Just give me a chance. Well, how much time do you need? A couple of hours. Okay, Roger. I'll trust you. It's 8 now. I'll give you until 12. Right. I think you've got everything you need for your translation. I don't know how to thank you, Dr. Reinhardt. What with opening up a library at this hour and finding all this material. Oh, stolen jewels, blood-drinking cats. After listening to that story of yours, how could I possibly refuse? But you don't believe me. I didn't say that. Do you mind if I have a look at that amulet? Oh, yes, of course, right here. There. Well, that's odd. That's very odd. Oh, what's that? Well, as you and I both know, in Egyptian art, Bast is always portrayed in one of two ways, either as a cat with a human body or a complete cat figure. This is just a cat's head. Does that strike you as being peculiar? <sighs> yes, it does, now that you mention it. A head without a body cannot move. This heavy chain. What does that suggest to you? A prisoner? Exactly. You know, this amulet was never used for the worship of Bast. It was made for another purpose. To hold something captive. You're saying... that this amulet was placed around the mummy's neck... to keep it from coming back to life again? The followers of Bast could turn themselves into cats. Gain immortality by drinking human blood. Oh, yes, I know that legend. Vampires turning to bats in the wilds of Transylvania. Man assuming the shape of wolves in Germany. Or foxes in China. In Africa, men turn into leopards. And the Arctic Eskimos believe that their wizards are transformed into bears. More legends. Maybe. 
But why is it that since the beginning of time, people of every culture, living 10,000 miles apart with no possible connection, have always held the same belief? That in certain conditions, man can take the form of an animal. You know, behind every universal legend lies a universal reality. It's easier for me to believe in a human murderer. Somebody who's trained an animal to kill. Well, maybe you'll find the answer when you've deciphered that inscription. But if you don't mind, while you're working, I'll go back to the library. I think I can locate another treatise on the Bast cult and an English translation. Well, don't you read hieroglyphics, Doctor? Oh, I'm, I'm just a librarian. But surely, with your knowledge, I was... Uh under the impression that you traveled extensively in the East. My dear boy, the farthest East I've ever been is Pasadena. Enjoy yourself. Amsa Neferkedi, Kurupset Bast. Hello. Yes, Lieutenant. Are you doing any good with that translation? I'm almost finished. Just give me another hour or so. Good. I've dug up an answer on my own. Answer to what? I should have known right from the beginning. But you threw me a curve with that cat routine. There was a cat. Well, right now I'm interested in human beings. There are only two people who knew what we did. One was Hester, and she's dead. The other is Rena. Rena? I've been running a check on Miss Rena Carter, or trying to. There's no record of her anywhere, not a trace. She just shows up out of nowhere. We feed her all the necessary information. We talk about the thief. We talked about Hester. She knew just where to go and what to do. But it doesn't make sense. I'm picking her up right now. Maybe she'll give us that answer. Now, you hold on to that amulet, pal. Roger. Yes, Doctor. Did you find what you're looking for? Found more than I was looking for. Here's something you must see. Wait a minute. Have you uh, finished your translation yet? Yes, I just did. Was there a phrase on that amulet that translates Korup Set? That's right, there was. Do you know the meaning of that phrase? Well, I was puzzled by it. Generally, it refers to something that's um, hidden away. Something secret that's guarded by Set, the god of the underworld. But uh, I, I don't know exactly what it means. It means that I was right about the purpose of that amulet. Yeah, look at this. Beware the seal of Kurupset, for he who dares to remove it will open the gates of hell. There's your exact translation. Good night, Roger. Tell me all about yourself. What do you want to know? Everything. Well, let's see how good you are. What do you know about me? There is such a thing as fate, Mr. Edmund. Here you are, in your present position. With the immediate influence upon you, the devil. I suppose. Now, I, I, uh, I know this sounds ridiculous, but uh, suppose blood is necessary to preserve mortal life. Like vampires? A throat were made by teeth and claws. And there were cat hairs on the body. One thing more, Lieutenant. The bodies of both victims were almost completely drained of blood. Just a cat. Roger, let's go away somewhere. <laughs> Doesn't matter where, just anywhere. All of these murders are now Hester. I'm just so frightened.
Carter was giving you up. What happened to the lunch? I left them off, hoping the cats would go away. They've been prowling around here all night. Cats? What cats? Roger, we've got to get out of here. Lieutenant Marker's on his way here to arrest you. What? Don't you see? Everything about you adds to Marco's suspicions. No previous address, no social security number. A girl who covers the tracks. A girl who stopped at the shop, not by accident, but with deliberate purpose. Marco thinks that you destroyed everyone who stood between you and that amulet. No, that's impossible. They were killed by a cat. I know they were. It's written on the amulet. You found it? Yes. That amulet is placed on the mummy's throat for the same reason a stake is driven through a vampire's heart, to keep it from rising and resuming an unnatural life, nourished by blood. So, when the thief removed the amulet, the mummy revived? That's right. Vampires seek their prey in the form of bats. The follower of bats took the shape of a cat to kill for blood and track down that amulet. And once that amulet is destroyed, this creature can live forever. So then, cat creature is really the mummy of the high priest of Bast? No, Reina. Not a priest. The inscription on the amulet identifies the mummy as a priestess. No wonder you're afraid of cats. They recognize you for what you are. The priestess of Bast. No, you don't know what you're saying. Of course you have no past history. All you know of today's world is what you drained from the mind of Hester's clerk when you hypnotized her and sent her to death. How can it make you understand? You don't know what it's like to be buried away alone in the darkness. Century upon century of blackness. Paralyzed, unable to move or breathe, yet conscious of every crawling moment. Now, when I revived, I had to protect myself, to get to anyone who might have that amulet. Now, that was self-preservation, not murder. Whatever it was, those people are dead. But I'm alive. Don't you see what that means? To be able to see and touch and love, to feel joy and desire. Now, I meant it when I said we could go away together. We can be together always. That'll be my gift to you, the secret of immortality. You're asking me to become what you are, to kill for blood. I'm offering you eternal life. What you offer is eternal death. I won't let you go.
Yeah. 